Okay, so I've been making, making a couple of videos lately, just featuring one or a couple pencils, and I feel like today I want to do a video sort of showcasing what I've got in my pencil case for the semester fall 2013. Uh, simply because it makes sense just to, you know, just, I guess, showcase what I've got uh, and sort of tell you a little bit about what pencil works for what, when I use certain ones, and when I don't use a pencil. So without further delay, let's go. So here we've got the wood cases. Um, you can see Murado Black Warrior, General Cedar Point, uh, Ticonderoga Black, which I just found, General Semi-Hex, and of course the classic Ticonderoga. Um, in terms of mechanical pencils, I've got Oh yeah, and of course the Papermate Murado Classic. Over here we have the Pencil Graph Gear 500, the Rotring 600, the Unicru Toga, and the Pencil Jolt. Uh, in terms of pens, oh, of course I have the Pilot 2020 Super Grip as well. Uh, in terms of pens, I have a Pilot G2.38, uh, this big round stick grip, purple pen. A uh, big grip roller that I got at Career Fair, and uh, these Z blue Zebra Z Grip Flight, uh, this Lotus Ink pen, I found it, and big alternate round stick grip, this smooth one, and another Pilot G2038 in red. Other, we've got Sharpie Gel highlighter and a Sharpie marker, of course, and of course. The Stutler Rasoplast, uh, the wrapper fell off a long time ago. In terms of lead and sharpener, I have Uni Nanodia 0.5 lead that came with the Kurotoga, and uh, a couple tubes of Pentel Super High Polymer 0.5 lead. This is just you know, your standard lead, you can get this anywhere. And an Alvin Brass Bullet Sharpener. So let's cover this stuff quickly. First, let's start with the wood case pencils. <laughs> First, let's start. Uh, let's see. These are the ones I use often. Uh, I'm lining these up here with a ruler so you can see sort of... This is, just gives you a sense of scale. Uh, I use the Murado Classic the most. I use this for taking notes and taking tests. The reason why I use a wood case pencil to take multiple choice tests especially is because you can, what I do is I like to write the whole test first and then bubble in all my answers at the end because at the start of the test it's going to look like this. Your pe pencil point is going to look a little sharper than this because you just sharpened it naturally. But as you go through the test the pen gets, pencil gets duller and by the time you get to the end the pencil is so dull that the amount of surface area that the lead is going to cover is closer to, you know, one millimeter, 1.1 millimeters, um, you know, lead diameter versus when you first sharpen it, which is probably about, you know, 0.5. So it fills in bubbles quicker on that Scantron. So you can use a dull pencil and it fills in bubbles quicker. That's why I like using wood cases. And I like this one because I know how it performs and I've also got a box full of them. So I'm not worried about running out. Okay, I've also got the Murado Black Warrior, which is a round variant of this one. If I ever have to put my pencil down, though, I don't like using this one because it'll just roll off the desk. It's round, you know. Uh, you can see exactly how much I use this one more than this one. Here I've got the General Semi-Hex. I love this pencil. It's really, really smooth. It's made in USA, and it's one of two pencil companies left in America. One of them being Generals, as you can see right here and the other one being Musgrave, which I don't have an example of. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this pencil, though, is that it, the tip dulls really, really quickly. I have to sharpen it maybe once or twice during a lecture, and if you've ever been to a MCB 150 biology lecture, you know how much there is to write. You don't have time to sharpen. So if I use a wood case pencil, I'll typically use this, because the point retention on this pencil is actually excellent, and the eraser is also excellent. Um, here I have the General Cedar Point. I kind of just got this, but the unfinished wood feel 
along with the eraser quality is excellent. I mean, it's just really nice. And point retention is better than the general semi-hex we saw earlier. So, yeah, here you go. You can see it nicely. Um, the fit and finish of this pencil is just amazing. I love it. And, of course, we have the classic Ticonderoga. Uh, I don't really like this one all that much, only because the point, well, the line is a little bit light, and I like a darker line. So I kind of just keep this in my... Uh, pencil case so that people can borrow it if they need to. Also, same reason why I keep this Ticonderoga black. Just in case people need to borrow a pencil, I can give them one of these. They're high quality, but they're not as high quality as the previous ones I showed you. Okay, in terms of mechanical pencils, we've got the Unicuro Toga, which has a unique lead turning engine. I have a review of this all by itself, but as you can see, this little orange portion here, I'm tip pressing the lead, and you can see sort of the logo turning. You see the logo there? It sort of turns back around. It makes it so that there's no flat point on the lead. You know, on a mechanical pencil, when you write, typically, uh, if you don't rotate the pencil as you write naturally, then you'll get develop a flat side on the lead. And then if you approach the paper with the other pointy side of the lead, you might actually break it or cut through your paper. Being a 0.5, it's kind of a fine lead diameter. So that kind of becomes a problem. Kurtoga solves that problem. It's pretty cool. It's a durable pencil. I've had it for, I've had it since August of 2012. So. Yeah, about a year and a month now. Okay, the next up, let's see, Pencil Jolt. This one's pretty cool, because see that spring in there? It moves. As soon as you, when you click out the uh, the lead cone, you can just shake it and extend the lead. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. You can shake it and extend the lead, rather than actually having to click. Although you can also naturally click as well. Another pencil I have similar to this is the Pilot 2020 Super Grip. I got this one several years ago, at least three, three and a half years ago, and uh, it still works perfectly. This one, you don't even have to cl click it to extend the lead sleeve. See? Watch that again. See? And, and then you just shake it a couple times and you've got some lead. This one's made in Japan, the other one's made in China. They're both excellent pencils, and uh, if you can find this one, I definitely suggest getting it. This one is very easy to find. I got it in a two-pack along with its green one. I haven't used the green one, and you can see sort of the wear on the pencil, especially on the back. If you can see that, the, the grip on the blue one is sort of, see that right there? It's sort of worn out, uh, and this green one is how it appeared earlier. So it, the grip kind of wears out quickly, but it's definitely a very comfortable pencil to hold. So, the Pentel Jolt, it's a cool one. And also the 2020 Super Grip by Pilot. Uh, next up, I have the Pentel Graph Gear 500. Uh, this pencil is amazing. I've had this pencil for three and a half years. I got it in the summer of 2010 in Germany. And uh, I keep an eraser on the back, uh, just because, you know, this eraser is kind of useless. Uh, it's got a light hardness indicator underneath the cap, though. In, in the cap, underneath the eraser. The reason why I'm able to keep this eraser here without really disturbing the balance is because this bottom portion is all metal and the back portion is all plastic. So you can see this this is just one piece and it's made out of metal. This part is made out of plastic. So that means the balance point is very close to the tip, right? If you can see that, yeah, so the balance point is right about there. And uh, so that makes it very easy to write with and effortless sort of to write. Uh, feels weightless in the hand. So, it's a beautiful pencil, and also, it's very durable. Next up, we've got the Rotring 600. I need to do a full review on this one myself. Uh, myself. I need to do a full review on this one uh, a little bit later, but for now, let's just say it's the finest mechanical pencil the world has ever seen. Uh, there's nothing about this pencil that compromises in quality. The balance point is right at the middle. Uh, it's extremely heavy, because the body is solid brass, and... Uh, also, it's got a solid clink to the to the lead advance. Here, listen to the Graph Gear 500. See, it sounds like a standard mechanical pencil. And uh, here is the Rotring 600. Sort of a deeper, more satisfying click. Also, it's it's a very heavy pencil. It's at least twice as heavy as the Graph Gear 500. Uh, it's very solid. It's also kind of uh, difficult to write with it for long periods of time only because of the weight and the way the balance works out, but it's going to outlive me. So, definitely a worthwhile investment if you're into mechanical pencils. Rotring 600. Uh, 
Next up, let's just go through these pens really quickly. It's a big grip roller, just a standard, you know, roller ball, disposable throwaway roller ball. Uh, Z Grip Flight by Zebra. It's nice blue ink. Mm, this random gel pen. And of course, the Pilot G2038. I prefer these to the 07 only because they're thinner and they also, and by virtue of them being thinner, they put down less ink and therefore last longer. So you can see I've bar I've used this one for maybe two or three research papers and and you can see it's like not it hasn't really gone down that much. This one I I found and uh, it's been heavily used I guess. I wonder who writes in red all that much. Maybe a teacher. But I found it in the middle of the quad. So yeah, it's they're nice pens. I use them sometimes. And here of course we have two standard Bic pens. The reason why I have these is a for borrowing. B if I don't want to. You don't have to worry about losing a pen or something, just grab one of these. And, uh, of course, the Stettler Rosso Plast Eraser, what can I say about this? It's an eraser. It works. And, quite honestly, the fact that it works is more than I can say about half the erasers that I've used. So, it's an excellent eraser. Uni Nano Dial Lead, excellent. And, of course, the sharpener. I've had this one for also three and a half years. Haven't had to replace the blade or sharpen it, nothing. It, it works fine, puts a point on my pencils. What else can I say? I mean, it, it works very well. So I, you can you can pick this up from any art store, like Blick or, or uh, I guess just Blick or Utrecht, depending on where you are, uh, for like five bucks, I think. And, and replacement blades come three, three in a pack for 250 or something. Extremely uh, reasonable prices, especially for a sharpener that's so small it just kind of fits in here uh, this is my pencil case it's not the best but hey you know it works it's like ripping but the way I, the reason why I like it is because I can sort of just put it there and it stands up uh, by itself and I can kind of fold it down and then all the pencils sort of can sit in there you know like this you know what I mean okay finally uh, let's take a look, quick look at the Sharpie gel highlighter. This is sort of a, a highlighter crayon style thing. It's not really a highlighter. It's more like a crayon. If you can see that, that's like sort of translucent. It looks kind of like a lightsaber, but not really. I, I like to pretend. So it's, it's a wax, sort of fluorescent wax deal, and it won't smear pencil if you highlight with it. It won't smear any ink because it's simply not liquid. It's solid stuff uh, and I mean here's sort of a demonstration this is let's write with a pencil hello it's pretty bright uh, I don't know if you can see that you can't there we go yeah so it's it's an excellent highlighter and it doesn't bleed either oh yeah it doesn't of course it doesn't bleed so, yeah, and so that's the best of the pencil case for fall 2013. It ended up being a little bit longer than I expected, but hey. So, thanks for watching, and uh, catch you next time. I think the next video I'm going to do is a review of the Roaching 600. So stay tuned. Thanks. Catch you later.